Somebody is going through something right now. Sickness in your body. You've lost your job. You've lost your home. You've lost your car. You've lost your marriage. You've lost your kids. The economy has affected you and your family. My friend, you need a breakthrough. Hello, and welcome to It's Time for a Breakthrough, the outreach ministry of the House of Faith, Church of God in Christ, the house where faith manifests change with our pastor, Elder Mac A. Harris, Jr. Our church is located at 2934 Lowell Avenue. That's 2934 Lowell Avenue, here on the west side of Jacksonville, where the telephone number is 904-388-7428. That's 904-388-7428. We invite you to come and worship with us. Our Sunday school begins at 9.30 a.m., followed by morning worship at 11 o'clock a.m. Wednesday night and Friday night service both begin at 7.30 p.m. Well, it's time for a breakthrough. Prepare your hearts and minds to receive a word from the Lord. Thank God for an opportunity to share the word of the Lord with you on today. Thank God for an opportunity to encourage you on this journey and in your walk with the Lord. It's good to be on the Lord's side. There is salvation, healing, deliverance on the Lord's side. There's joy, love, peace, happiness, and victory after victory. I'm so glad to be on the Lord's side. You know, it's good to know that he is with us. He will never leave us, and he, will ne- and he will take care of us. He's a mighty God, and he's awesome in all of his ways. He loves us so much, my dear friend. There's no greater love that he has for us, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. I praise and magnify the Lord today for Jesus and what he is doing and has done in us. We are blessed. We are so richly blessed in the name of Jesus. Truly, God is a good God, and he's an on-time God, and I praise him on this beautiful day. We want you to pray with us and believe the Lord with us. Touch and agree with us today as we go to the Lord in prayer with our own minister, Robert Lee Baker. Father God, we love you. Today, God, we thank you for allowing us to get up clothed and in our right mind. God, we've been focusing in on your greatness and your magnificent and your awesomeness. There's no other God besides you. You allowed your son to come in a body made like ours and suffer in the body for us. And you raised him from the dead the third day. And we got a chance, and we thank you for that chance. God, we thank you for loving us, Lord, and showing us ourselves. God, help us to see your greatness all day long. God, open up our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears and help us to cry out. We give up. We give up. We can't do it without you. God, we're going to love you and we're going to praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Prayer changes things. And my dear friend, prayer can go where we can't go. We want to thank God today for the pastor of the House of Faith Church of God in Christ, Elder Mac Harris. He's a truly a man of God. A man that loves the Lord, that loves his family, and loves the people of God. He's an unselfish man, and a kind man, and a man that believes in prayer, and that prayer changes things. We're also praying a special prayer of healing for Sister Helen Harris. We ask that the Lord will send deliverance and give her the victory in her time of sickness. Truly, God is able to do anything but fail. And we bless the Lord on today for his healing power. We bless the Lord on today for his loving kindness and his tender mercy. Because truly, God is our healer. Today, I would like to share the word of God with you coming from uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 4 through 7. And it says, But he said himself, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down on, under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no, not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink 
and laid down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And as I read that particular passage of scripture, it's talking about Elijah. And uh, that's the 19th chapter of First King. But as I went back and I looked at the scripture, I started at the 17th chapter of uh, First King, how it was a drought going on. You know, there was no rain and hadn't been rain for many years. And the Lord sustained Elijah. The first thing he did, he told Elijah to go to this brook, which was at east of the Jordan. And he said, when you get to the brook, say, I will supply you with water to drink. And he said, I will command the ravens to bring you food. So Elijah obeyed the Lord in the 17th chapter of First King. And he did as the Lord had told him to do. And he went to this brook. And the Lord sustained him, gave him water, and brought the ravens to feed him. Then I went on in the same chapter and it led me to Elijah and the widow woman. And how he sent Elijah to Zarephath. You know, when there was no food and no drink, God made provisions for him in the 17th chapter. He told him where to go to the widow woman. He told him, you know, what to tell the widow woman. And he was obedient. And when he went to the widow woman and she did as Elijah had told her to do, then it lets you know that her meal barrel didn't run dry. Then we go along just talking about what God can do. See, God can do the impossible. The scriptures say when it's impossible with man, it's possible with God. So these were two impossible situations. There was no rain, yet he sent him to a brook, and the brook was going to give him water, amen. And he was going to send a raven, a bird, just to give him some food. And then he told him in the 17th chapter, go to this woman during the time of famine, and tell her to feed you, and then her real bear will never run dry. So just being obedient to what God says, will help us to be sustained in our time of need. Amen. Then I went on to the 18th chapter, and it was talking about Ahab and uh, the uh, 450 prophets of Baal, how Elijah went, and he stood on God's promises, and he wanted to let them know that God was the true and the living God. So he, they prepared the bulls, and, they, and he said, and Elijah told us, now y'all go first. And the first one of y'all that, when, when y'all call on y'all God, and we have prepared this sacrifice. You call on your God. And the first God, amen, that answer and sends fire is the true God. And we know the story, how they hollered and they screamed and they prayed for their God to help them and to send the fire. And it was no answer from their God. Because we serve the only true and living God. But we know that after Elijah, he, he told them to come closer. And he gathered them around and he, and he began to repair the altar that had been torn down. And then after an hour... He prayed unto the altar, and he even wet the wood. And we know that our God, which is the true and the living God, answered with fire. Let us know that he was with Elijah, that he was sustaining Elijah. Now, all that he had done for Elijah, we get to the 19th verse, 19th chapter, amen, of the passage that we're talking about this morning, and, eight, and he began to run. He was giving up. Now, all God had done for him, he was giving up. He was only afraid of Ahab's wife. Jezebel. Now God had showed up when there was no water, when there was no food. And God had showed up when he had 450 prophets against him. But yet, amen, he was so afraid of Jezebel, Ahab's wife. So he began to run away. He began to go up under the juniper tree. He left everything. He sat down up under the tree and he wanted to die. Now I know sometimes, my dear friend, we go through some things in life that you just want to die. I've been through some situations where I don't even want to get out of the bed. As I read this little passage of scripture, I thought about it. I say, Elijah was just like we are today. Things come against us, amen. We forget about what the, the previous track record and what God has done for us and how he's almighty and what he can do. We just like we have a, a memory break there, a memory lapse, amen. And we just forget about the goodness of the Lord. And this is what he did. He laid down under the tree and he fell asleep. Only because this one woman had said, the same thing you did to the 450 prophets of Baal, I'm going to do it to you this time tomorrow. So Elijah ran for his life. And when he got up under the tree, he said, I wish I could die. Just take away my life. But you know God gives us life. He come that we may have life, amen, and have it more abundantly. So as he sat there and he was beginning to be sad, he went to sleep. Then the Lord sent an angel. That's just like God. He's so merciful. He's so kind. Amen. He sent an angel and woke him up. And he told him to get up and eat. And when he told him to get up and eat, he provided the cake on, and, and the water for him to drink. Because God wanted him to know I provided during the time of the drought. 
Amen. I provided during the time of the widow woman. Amen. I provided on my car, my amen. And there's nothing too hard for me and I can't provide right now. And that's what he wants somebody to know today. No matter what you're going through, get up out of that bed. Go into the word of God. Eat spiritually. Eat naturally. Gain some strength. Gird up your loins. Know that I'm on your side. Amen. Know that I have not left you. Know that I've seen you till. See, God is on time, God. All he wants us to know is to walk in his in his righteousness. All he wants us to do is to consult him. Let us know, let him know what you need. Let him know what you're going through. And he will fix it for you. So Elijah, that that this the first time the angel came, amen. Elijah went right on back to sleep. And then he woke him up again. And when, when he woke him up, he said, The journey is too much for thee. The journey is too much for us on today. Things that we go through, our children, and the disappointments in life, sometimes on our job, sickness. You know, it's so much that we go through, but it's too much for us. And God knows it's too much for us. That's why he said, get up, gird up your loins, eat, and let me handle things. And that's what he did. We know the story. He went ahead and after Elijah got up and went on the mountain that God had told him to go through, how God sent an earthquake, how he sent the, uh, he stopped the wind. And everything he did, all of this here to show Elijah that I am still in control. So no matter what you're going through today, no matter what you're faced with, you know, it may look impossible. And it is impossible for you. And it may be impossible for me. But it's not impossible for God. He's the same God that was on the mountain with Mount Carmel with Elijah. He's the same God today, yesterday, and forever. Amen. The scriptures say he changed is not. So don't let your faith, don't, don't lose your faith in God. Remember what God can do. Don't look at the situation. I thought about when Peter walked the water. He was doing fine. He had faith to get out of the boat, first of all. And he was doing fine as long as he kept his focus on Jesus. But when he began to look around and see what, what he was faced against, that's when he began to sink. Amen. So stop looking around at what you're faced with. Look to Jesus. Look up and know that Jesus is your provider. He is your sustainer. And he will see you through. You know, he's an omnipotent God. He's an omnipresent God. You know, he's an on-time God. Know who you serve and know who you belong to, and you will be all right. So get up, eat, gird up your loins, and know that God is in control. So even after God uh, saw that he was having this pity party and that he had given up, God wasn't disappointed. God just wanted him to know you can't stay in the shape you're in. That's what I came for, that you, can, that you won't stay in that shape that you're in. You won't stay down. So if you want to get up, you got to, first of all, know whom you serve. Know who you belong to. Know that God is on your side and know that there's nothing too hard for him. So everything is going to be all right. But you got to let God control your life and you got to be obedient. As long as Elijah was obedient, God, God did what he was supposed to do. But once he began to be fretful and he began to be pitiful and he began to be sad, he sent an angel to go see about his child. That's just his love and his mercy. He won't let us down. He will keep us. And God loves us so much. And that's why when I started talking off in, the, in the lesson on today, I wanted you to know about his love, about his mercy, and about his kindness. And how he does not have respect to person. That God loves us all. So he wants us to know that if we want him to help us, he'll help us. So all we have to do is let God know what we need and how bad we want it. And God will bless us with it. So you have to be obedient and stand on his promises and take him at his word. Because if God said it, he will do it. So I want you to know that God is on your side and he will never leave you nor forsake you. No matter what you're going through, just trust in the Lord. Yes, and we, we've got to understand that God let, allow us to see these things, to see ourselves. And we got to confess to God and admit to God. We can't be like Sarah. Sarah said, no, I did not lie. But we, we don't have to try to lie to God. God know our thoughts. He said, I know your thoughts before, you, before they come to you. God love us, and he want us, to, he want us to come out of there. We want us to empty out the things that's in us. He will never let us down. We, we, let, we, we allow things to come, the trees to block us from seeing God's greatness and his mercy for us and his love for us. But all we got to do is just repent and tell God we're sorry and we want to make a change. Let your repentance be intensified and God will work a miracle. We can't work a miracle for ourselves. We can't save ourselves. But we got to allow God's holy anointing to make a great change in our life. You know, we, we have a great focus on a great change and to make a difference. It's easy to go the wrong way. 
But all we got is just as easy to repent and to confess to God. Lord, we can't do this thing by ourselves. So we're going we're gonna to beg God to help us today. Lord, we thank you for the message today. We thank you for opening our eyes, and we thank you for opening our ears. We got to see what you're trying to tell us. We got to see your greatness and your magnificence and your awesomeness. And we got to do it day and night and night and day. And we can't do it on our own. We need your holy anointing. We need your holy power. God, keep us and guide us and keep our children, keep our finances, keep our health. God, and we're going to praise you for it and we're going to love you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you for listening to It's Time for a Breakthrough. We praise God for your breakthrough, and we would love to hear from you. So please feel free to write us, send prayer requests, praise reports, or donations to the House of Faith, Church of God in Christ, 2934 Lowell Avenue, Jacksonville, Florida, 32254. Or email us at elder, at gmail.com. That's E-L-D-E-R-L-H-O-L at gmail.com. Have a blessed day in the Lord.